go. Guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the MindMate podcast. This is a, a, a this is gonna be a fun show because uh, this week now marks the official launch week of my Find Your Mission course. I'm actually so pumped about this. I I did a I actually built the the course in the summer of this year, and it was really kind of shitty. I, I did all the filming, I did all the production, I you know wrote the script up. I knew exactly what I wanted to say and how I wanted to show you guys how to implement these frameworks so that you know you won't get lost again, and um, you know and how to show you to reduce that existential suffering. That you know, uh, who am I? What's my purpose? You know, what's my identity? I don't know how I'm. I feel lost, confused, anxious. I did all of that. And uh, I had a look back and I was like, this needs a, a serious update. So for the past three months, uh, a friend and I, um, who's a, who's a vid- videographer, um, incredibly professional um, videographer, we've been building this thing together because it needed the, um, you know, my side of it, the, the, the psychology and the, the practicality and the you know, the, the actual crux of what this whole show is about, but it also needed the production value and it needed the, the, the quality. You know, I think, um, when, when someone is buying a product or buying a service, it's really important that there's that extra finesse to it. So we really went full ham in this course. I'm, I'm so pumped for it, but because you guys listen to this show, uh, you know, this is, this has been the first thing that I really ever did, uh, on my own, the MindMate podcast. And some of you that reach out to me um, have been listening from day one, which is really cool. And I was doing a previous show before this called Adventure Bit Radio, but I wanted to give you guys a personalized um, taste as to what this course is going to be about because you're my team, you know, you're my crew. And uh, I really love you guys. It's, um, it's it, you know, very, you're very special to, uh, to my heart. So this podcast is obviously called How to Find Your Purpose. And it's a funny thing, you know, for the past six or seven years, my life has been absolutely attached to that whole idea of how to find my purpose, how to find out who I am and, and what I want to do. And I, I went through many books, went through many ups and downs, many different kind of labels of mental health issues, um, uh, traveled to four different continents. Um, I reckon I've interviewed now over 450 people, maybe 500 people now. I've certainly done over 500 podcast episodes and I've been addicted to trying to understand what makes human beings ticks. And I've interviewed people everywhere from musicians and astronauts and psychologists and philosophers to uh, porn stars, uh, hot dog eating, um, winning competitors. Um, God, who are some of the... Um, people that have circumnavigated the world on 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 their boats, uh, to people that have had profound experiences on psychedelics, to people that have undergone major stress in their lives, to people that have lost loved ones, to child soldiers, to people who have uh, climbed and summited Mount Everest. Um, it's been fascinating, and you know the one thing that really shines through for me for all of them is this constant thing of. You have to find something that the day-to-day is more enjoyable than the actual destination itself. So if I think about, you know, and I'll, I'll bring this down very locally. If I'm thinking about my stomach right now, I would love to eat a chicken sandwich, okay? Would my life's purpose want to want to be to, to, to you know, build or, or make chicken sandwiches? For me, the answer is no, because the actual how to earn that chicken sandwich I have to get the bread out and get the butter out and, you know, get all these things that the, the process of making the chicken sandwich isn't enjoyable for me. Now, if you say to me something like, well, what about writing a book? You know, what's actually really interesting about that. I find it much more exciting to write the book than actually hold the book at the end. And that should tell me something very, very distinct about what writing means to me. Writing to me is the journey. It's the process. I actually don't give a fuck about holding my books at the end. I've got four. I've got three in the pipeline now that I'm looking forward to publishing. Uh, I'm, I went the, when I held my first book, it was 
cool, but it wasn't as fun and exciting as actually writing the chapters, going back over my work, feeling the therapy of writing my story and detaching myself from that story. All of those things, the process of writing a book is much more enjoyable to me than than actually holding the book itself. Now, that is one of these markers of finding your mission. So automatically, we, we want to start removing ourselves from that idea of finding and latch ourselves onto that idea of creating our mission. So that's the first little indicator that we that I talk about in this course, this find your mission course. And yes, I've used it for marketing purposes, but we want to start thinking about creating our missions, creating our purposes. And the best way to do that is to start having a think about what our perfect day would look like. This is one of the modules that we do in the course. We have a think about our perfect day. The best thing about the perfect day is that there's no destination idea in that perfect day. It's what's the kind, what's the kind of day that you could live over and over and over again. And that's particularly applicable now since in, uh, in Victoria, we're all in lockdown down here in Australia, but, uh, If we can make our own subjective groundhog days as exciting as possible, and it's like, yep, I could do that every day, we're onto something. That's the kind of day we want to start moving towards. So that's a really important thing to to consider here. I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast that to reduce existential confusion, we need to uh, put the blinders on, so to speak. We need to reduce the amount of opportunities opportunities that we have in life and focus ourselves solely towards a path. Because I think for many of us in the West, <clears throat> um, you know, younger, younger adults in this incredibly privileged life that we have to come up in the West, there are so many opportunities about things that we could do. You know, you, you come out of high school, many of us go to university, and then it's like, well, I could be a lawyer, I could be in finance, I could be an accountant, you know, if we're going down the corporate world. Now with social media, I could develop my love of painting, I could develop my love of writing, I might start a podcast, I might figure all that shit out later and go traveling. I might save my money by working in a bakery or in a cafe and invest. I'm like, you know, there are thousands of opportunities. And what happens when there are too many opportunities? Well, the opportunities that are presented to us lose their value in the very same way that when you're scrolling on Netflix and you're there for hours, the reason is none of those things, any any movie or TV show that might be interesting to you is just drowning in a sea saturated with other videos and TV shows. But if I gave you one VHS tape from the 1990s and one shitty TV with a VCR player, and that was the only thing you'd ever get for the rest of your life, you would cherish that like it was a child, okay? Excuse the analogy, but you see my point. When there is abundance, there is proportionally less value. And this is how we live in the world for a lot of us who are interested in this kind of stuff, finding your purpose, finding your mission. There are too many opportunities. There are too many movies, too many TV shows on Netflix. You don't know which one to choose. What are you going to do in your life? Who do you want to be, right? This is all framework stuff. So this is a lot to do with what the course is all about. The journals that you get, the theory that I teach you from the neuroscience and the psychology to the reason why the animal of the human being has has evolved with this thing called the reward pathway, the dopamine system, and how that works with the serotonergic system. The serotonergic system. I always get that wrong. This kind of reward, this this kind of like enticement for pleasure. How do we get to that next goal? What's that next step? How can we put all that into our perfect day? All of that sort of stuff is explained in this course. Then you get your prac. You get the journals. You get the right prompts. This is going to be the thing that's going to reduce the confusion that you might have right now. And I'm speaking specifically to younger adults, but this is for everyone. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard of the midlife crisis. This is when people look back on their lives and I've counseled a lot of these people. They look back on their lives and they go, oh shit, you know, was was the first 40 years of my life worth it? What was I doing? What kind of goals was I chasing? Oftentimes we come into greater conscious awareness. Like we, we have that moment of reflection. We go, whoa, what was I doing? You know, and it's not always a bad thing. We just need the frameworks. I think people get lost and then that's when they buy the Ferraris and date younger people and go traveling when they don't know how to implement this this new reflection into a perhaps, let's say, a more intrinsic pathway, a more intrinsically meaningful pathway. This is the stuff we need. So 
This perfect day is really, really important, guys. What's also really important is to tell yourself why how you're currently living isn't what you want to be doing. There was a great analogy. I was listening to a Joe Rogan episode and Dr. Phil was talking about pain and how pain can be a motivator. And he was saying, he said to Joe Rogan, he said, you know, Joe, have you ever, uh, I'm not going to do the accent. He said, have you ever stood on a, a hot road in the middle of summer? He's from, he's from Texas. So with your bare foot, with your bare feet, have you ever stood on the bottom in that bitumen, you know, that really, really hot bitumen. We have that in Australia, of course. It's so hot, it's frying your feet. But I can just remember back to being a kid and just wanting so desperately to get over to the milk bar to buy myself an ice cream that it didn't matter to me. So if we extrapolate that out to finding your mission, it's kind of like the why I was willing to go through that pain to to walk on that bitumen. And yeah, I probably should have just put shoes on, but I didn't. But I was willing to burn my feet for the sake of that ice cream. Uh, so that should tell me a lot about the pleasure and the reward of that ice cream. Now, how can I apply that to my perfect day? What am I willing to go through in life so that I can make that perfect day a reality? So that's the pleasure side of things. But this is what Dr. Phil was talking about, which I found really interesting. And this coincides with a lot of what neuropsychology and behaviorism talks about. But pain and fear, they're also incredible motivators. So what he said, if people are excited and run towards pleasure, but sometimes that's not enough. And it would be like standing in the middle of that hot road, having your feet burning without actually doing anything about it. So to come full circle, how I started that kind of segment was talking about why, where you're currently living right now, what you're doing and what job you have, why that doesn't suffice. This is your pain and really highlighting that, really bringing attention to the burning feet on the bitumen. That should be enough to start moving you, motivating you to get to the other side, to get to the ice cream, to get to the milk bar. So this is another piece of the A, point A and point B framework that we, we go through in this course. And we go to this to great depth. We filmed this course, like I said, for over three months We were filming it for days and days. I was studying a lot more than I had. I went through the books. I talk a lot about neuropsychology because neuropsychology is essentially how the brain affects behavior and how it affects change. And what's so cool about that is that neuropsychology and science takes away the subjectivity of everything. So you might be going through something in your life. I've gone through things in my life. We all go through different things. But if we come to understand more about the the meat and the, the the hormones and what the brain does, it's a very uniting idea there because it's like, this is how the human animal works. If I integrate this knowledge into my life, I'm going to see positive change. So how can we get more of this stuff into you? How can you come to understand this stuff? This is the course, of course, but implementing these things into your life. Why is where you are right now so painful? Like be honest with yourself, you know, why are you not happy? What kind of life would you like? What does that life look like? What does your potential look like if you met that person in a bar or in a restaurant, if you had lunch with them, what does that look like? Then we start to mediate between these two points and you start to see change and this will affect your mood. It will affect your your determination, your motivation to get up early in the morning. It will affect the, the people around you, it'll affect your ability to, to reduce procrastinating and to create more structure in life because the why is pushing you forwards and it's actually forcing you to go that way because you're afraid about staying stuck where you are. That's just two of the frameworks. We actually have eight frameworks in this module to get in this course, sorry, eight, six, sorry, eight modules in total. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I did with my counseling clients These are programs that I was offering to them. What's so cool about it is that the best thing about structures and about coming to understand why you are the way you are, what has got you to this, to this spot and where you want to go is that you can actually start to see that it doesn't take a whole lot. There's a specific module in the course, which I love, and it's called Dharma. And one of the things we do is we break down the perfect day that you have designed into what you can do now and what you can't do yet. So how much of that perfect day can you, can you actually make a reality right now? You said in that perfect day, you wanted to get up early at 6am and cuddle your partner. So you turn around, you cuddle your partner. 
Then you make a coffee. Then you might go for your run. Then you might sit down to work or take the dog for a walk. Those are things you can do right now. And you've written in that perfect day. You said, this is going to be perfect. You know, there's no, there's no setting the bar low when it comes to perfect. And there's some practicality around that journal. You know, I talk things about making sure that it's not, I want 80 jet planes and I want to be, you know, in a, in a bath with like 60 women or, or men, you know, and I want to be doing all these things. And it's not like that. It's, it's the groundhog day mentality. What kind of day would you love, love, love to live over and over and over again? Coming back to that point, how much of that kind of day can you do right now? And then you'll start to, as I said before, get the blinders on and see, okay, this is actually what I have to do to get that final 30%. These are the people I have to contact. This is that business I have to start. This is where I need to live. This is how much weight I need to lose. It just becomes so practical. You know, one of the worst things that I saw in the whole self-improvement world when I was going through this sort of stuff, and this is fundamentally why I made this course, because I wanted to make a course that I could give to my younger self, you know, when I was really, really lost. And this coincided with a lot of the work that I was doing with my clients. But the number one thing that I got really frustrated with was that finding your purpose was some kind of spiritual esoteric thing. Not that I have any issues with that. I, I love that stuff, but it made it very, very intangible for me. I was like, it sounds like all these people that are talking to me about this find your purpose kind of stuff don't really know what they're talking about or or there's some kind of like supernatural element to it or like once I find it, then I'll know. And I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like I just want to have it now. You know, I want to create my own one. This course will show you exactly how to do that. It doesn't have to be esoteric and woo woo and something that you find like gold in a mine. You can just get to it right now. If you do the work in this course, you just get to it. You can do this course there's a lot of, there's, there's, there's a lot of, we, we put a, um, a, a, a counseling client relationship in there. So you can see how I go about it when I'm actually counseling people, but you can get this stuff done as soon as you finish the course, it's six hours, something like that. And you just go for it. That's what I love so much about it because it's not, it won't take you years to find your course and decades to taste all the things you need to taste before you realize, you know, I always got me thinking about that whole youth is wasted on the young phrase. And I hated that. I always hated that because I was like, well, I don't want to get to 80 before I actually realize how to live. And then they have like five years left to live. That's such a dumb thing to consider in my opinion. And I get what they're trying to say because it's like you grow and grow with greater wisdom. And then you can look back and go, well, I probably wouldn't have done things like that, but screw all that. I don't want to live like that. I want to, I want to be on point on my mission right now and living that life. And I want everyone, I want you guys to have that as well, because it's simple. It's just not taught. I really think this kind of stuff should be taught. And I'm not saying that this is, this course has to be taught in schools, but some kind of practical philosophy, you know, it took me a long time to figure this sort of stuff out. You know, if I was going to say that to myself, that whole youth is wasted on the young idea, it's a lot simpler than I thought it was. It's just an idea of frameworks, you know? It's that point A, point B, how am I gonna mediate those two? How can I stay within the bumper walls if I'm rolling my bowling ball down an alley so I can hit all those eight pins? That's what we're doing here. Right now, if you feel lost and you're struggling, and this is probably why you've clicked on this, this podcast or watch me on YouTube right now, it's because you don't have your frameworks. You're a bowling ball trying to hit those eight pins, but you don't have you're not on the, you're not on the laneway. You don't know where the eight pins are. You don't know what they look like. There's no bumpers holding you up. So you, you don't roll in a straight line. You, you, you're going really, really slow or really, really fast. You're either really, really depressed or really, really anxious. You don't have those frameworks. You don't have the bumpers, the pins, the right speed. You're not enjoying that process. And this course is designed to help you do that. So I suppose I just wanted to look, I've had a coffee today. I'm on, I feel really on. I'm really, really excited about this, this course. Um, what's really exciting for me too, is that the webinar is totally free as well. If you just want to watch the webinar, I'd love for you to sign up for the course as well, because I, we put everything into the course and I really believe it's, it's worth it. If you just want to do the free webinar, just sign up for the free webinar. The link's in the description on this. 
It'll be in the show notes of the the podcast as well, if you're listening. So you can hit that. The webinar officially drops on Thursday, the 24th, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that would be roughly Thursday morning for everyone living internationally in the U.S., a little bit later in the East. Um, The webinar is totally free as well, guys. And I'll be there in the first couple of webinars to hit you up with some... um, some live Q and A. So if you have any questions, just, just, just message me on there and, um, and I'll help you out. And after that, guys, like I said, if you want to do the course, if you feel like you really need those frameworks, if you feel lost right now, if you're not sure, if you're feeling anxious, uh, I, I was, I was years riddled with anxiety because of this stuff. I didn't know where I was going, you know, depression, these things can help. If you're just putting the blinders on, you feel that sense of purpose. You feel that identity, the responsibility that it takes now to actually make that, that potential you into reality. It really, really engenders a lot of that meaning that, that I think is a pivotal marker for psychological wellbeing. So guys, listen back to the podcast, take some notes, Jump on the webinar. It, the uh, the link will be uh, in the description, like I said. And I love you all. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed the content, uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.